I see the world in the title, Hindsight. Mm -hmm.
we're gonna do a, a Brazilian piece. This piece is called Heart of Brazil. And what they mean, it's about the Amazon. And uh, if you wanna really hear good, uh, Dion Warwick uh, did a recording of this, that's, that's out of sight. So this is by Antonio Adolfo. It's called The Heart of Brazil. <clears throat>
Uh, uh, we're gonna miss them. This is the last concert with the jazz ensemble. So let's recognize them. We got Timothy Johnson. Let's get his back. Paul Bailey. Jason Wood. And we have the great Langston Hughes. dedicated to Andrew White. And so I uh, went over to uh, Andrew's house to speak to his cousin who's in charge of his estate, Vicki. And uh, I saw this picture uh, on the wall in Andrew's study. And uh, he asked me, to say, do you want it? I said, yeah, I want it. <laughs> so I said, I'm gonna give it to Langston. So this is a picture of Langston Hughes. Oh. Oh. So, I can't tell you the name of the title because it's very uh, vulgar. Oh. It might fit in, right? <laughs> so this is going to feature uh, Langston mm -hmm. and Sean. Sean Woo. from Seattle, Washington. Woo. So this is Genopedic uh, number one by Eric Sati.
good. Y'all like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a, a, an original composition by one of our students that we're going to play. And uh, he said, Mr. Irvin, it's not going to be loud. I'm going to say my ears. Sean has written a piece. It's called Portrait of a Breath. Uh, this is an original piece by Sean. It features Langston. I had scissors. This one here.
your mother's watching it from Seattle, Washington. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to play uh, 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 another piece, uh, Green Chimneys by Delonious Funk. And then we're going to bring our guests, our Ben and Ghost recipients. Uh, this is the best part of the program. So this is uh, Green Chimneys by Delonious Funk. <clears throat>
present the Benny Ghost Award to the late great Calvin Hill. We, Dr. Jones, can you come forward, please? Yeah. Master Award is presented to Calvin James Jones Sr., legendary UC, UDC jazz educator, trombonist, bassist, pianist, yeah. and a whole lot of other things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to present this award to his daughter on April 6, 2023. Bassist, pianist, composer, arranger, and mentor. And it's his role as an educator, I think, that's so important. Calvin Jones loved to teach. And his career extended from elementary school to high school to the University of the District of Columbia, where he served as director of jazz studies from 1976 until his passing in 2004. I always remember what David Baker said about him. It was in an interview with the Washington Post. He said, you can't overestimate what Calvin Jones brought to the table. He was a visionary. He was doing a lot of these things in jazz education before it was fashionable to do them. And I think his, his gift as a creative educator was how he was able to maintain how jazz musicians learned their craft traditionally and adapted to the academic environment. And in the process, uh, created a whole generation of teachers to pass this art form on. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank Brother Irving, Arthur Dawkins, and the wonderful Harvard University Jazz Ensemble. They donated his trombone to the uh, Jazz Studies program, and it's on display in the Philly C. Grand Jazz Archives. And I hope to see all of you at the Calvin Jones Big Band Jazz Festival, April 24th, and you get to hear this wonderful ensemble again, along with the University of Maryland and the UDC Jazz Ensemble. say about Professor Jones. Um, there are many musicians that have been influential because of their music alone, but then there are others who have impacted many people's lives, not only with their music, but also because of who they were as human beings. Mm -hmm. Calvin Jones was a man who was influential on many who came in contact with him. So much, of, so, much so that he had his own language <laughs> and sage-like sayings for expressing different things that many of us remember. A lot of them I can't share. <laughs> I may get canceled. <laughs> um, but he gave us, he gave many of us musical skills, yes, but also life and social skills. Yes, he was very serious about the music, but also serious about teaching the students how to grow up and become adults. I remember uh, telling Professor Jones that I had a new car and he said, man, come in my office, man. Uh, every 3,000 miles, get your oil changed. <laughs> and if you don't have a mechanic, I'm going to send you to my mechanic. You know, tell him I sent you. And um, uh, also, I remember uh, he found out I had a girlfriend. <laughs> and, um, but I can't share what he said about that. <laughs> Professor Jones, Calvin Jones, and his memory and legacy will live on at UDC and abroad. Thank you.
I was heard about Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Well, the very first city that had Mardi Gras in America was Mobile, mm -hmm. Alabama, my hometown. Mm -hmm. And you know when you watch TV, you see the bands marching the street, you see the little kids running behind the band. Well, that was me <laughs> in Mobile. And the band that I ran behind, the band I always wanted to play in, was the Excelsior Brass Band of Mobile. And the band was formed in 1883. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So we have the leader of the band, Mr. Jose London, a great trumpet player, who in from Mobile with, with his, along with his wife. And we're going to present the Benny Ghost to the here. But let me have Dr. Kamali, you want to come and say a few words? To present uh, the Benny Goldson Jazz Master Award to the Excelsior Brass Band founder and uh, Maestro Jose London, leader and manager, on this April 6, 2023, at Howard University. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Part of my job here at Howard University is to remind the future about the heritage upon which they stand. And when I was asked by Professor Irby, uh, told that this great giant was going to be here, I started living with the information and found out how central this great band was to Mobile and the Alabama community in, in total. Uh, this man, Mr. London, has been with the band 47 years. Right. <laughs> Trumpeter and leader. The only thing, big piece of information is not in the program is that in 2022, the Excelsior Band was, was given the NEA, National Heritage Fellowship, is the highest honor that the United States government gives any traditional and folk arts group. Oh, that's <laughs> the No, I'm just saying that's that's on the program. Oh, um, cool, that's on the program. In front of the program, it says National Down for the Arts. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Right. I, I want I want to thank everybody for that. The Excelsior Band for people who may be familiar with the band is one of those bands that people get in and then they leave when they die. It's, it's not a it's not what you think of as a typical band. Guys get in, they never get out. I met Fred Urban when he was at Grambling, I was at Mississippi Valley. So we always had this competition thing about who was the best trumpet player. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, it, wasn't, it wasn't us, but it was our colleagues. We'd always say, well, Fred is waiting on you to get off the bus so he can challenge you. And I would like to say that I won that competition. <laughs> I'm pleased to present uh, the Benny Goldston Jazz Master Award to uh, a, a, a member who is seen, I think, all of them, mm -hmm. and now he's one of them. <laughs> 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 
today I'd like to present this uh, award to uh, Hugh Joseph Rusty, her son the third. Yeah. Uh, journalist, uh, uh, radio program personality, uh, and many other things. <laughs> presented today, uh, April 6, 2023, Children's Banner. Congratulations, Rusty. here in the Washington community. And we certainly love what Professor Irby does with these wonderful musicians. And we love the fact that we have generations of musicians coming up, but we also need audience for this music we call jazz. And Rusty Hassan has done a lot to teach future audience members here in this community. Well, thank you, brother. Young King, Young King is, is a fan of this music. When I discovered I was born on the day Charlie Parker recorded Now's the Time, I made that my Zodiac sign. <laughs> and uh, I want to acknowledge my wife, Sandra, who's watching on Facebook, uh, who's unable to make it here today because the means were, were bothering her. But uh, she introduced me to Howard as a student when the students were, were taking over buildings to make sure they had a jazz program here. <laughs> and uh, my daughter's Aisha and Kenja, Aisha here, who used to say on the radio, listen to my daddy play jazz. <laughs> <laughs> and to, to, to my grandchildren, Kane and Truly, who were my jazz buddies, uh, that people would see that they got to come out and, and meet their heroes. In fact, I was just looking at a photograph of Truly with Jerry Allen, who I took to see a Christmas concert. I was at uh, her senior recital here. Yeah. And, and when I look at the list of other recipients of this award, I am deeply humbled. These folks are my heroes. And what I do is get to share what they've done for our culture to an audience to make sure more people know about it. Which is why I've done that on the radio for, since 1966 actually, mm -hmm. started with WGTV. Sharing the, the music on the radio and then the classroom at American University, Georgetown University, University of Maryland, University College. And where I'm most proud to be working right now at the University of the District of Columbia. There's a real synergy between the university and here. Davey Arbor will tell you that he went to both universities and uh, Antonio Parker, who was, uh, his grandfather was close friends with uh, my wife's father going back to World War II. Yeah. And they were the army buddies together. So the real family connection that I have. And again, I, I'm really humbled and, and really thankful for this award. We have Sonny Sumter, CEO and President of the DC Jazz Festival. Mark Carey.
inspiration to over three decades to musicians that have grown up in the city, that have grown up in New York, in the country, and I would dare say around the world. Mark really embodies the spirit of what we consider jazz history today. He's, his influence is evident on his peers, making it apparent as to why he remains one of the most important contemporary jazz makers. He is a graduate of both the Betty Carter and the Abby Lincoln Bandstand <laughs> Academies. <laughs> and no one can set the groove behind the drums and DC go-go band like Mark Carey. <laughs> An esteemed professor at both Juilliard and Manhattan School of Music. He's also known for his Thursday night jam sessions called the Harlem Sessions. A band leader in his own right, he plays uh, with bandmates such as vibraphonist Stefan Harris and bandmate Casey Benjamin. He has actually began the genesis of Robert Glasper's recording, Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit. What I really love about him is that from the beginning of his 30 plus, plus career, he's always had an uncanny knack for sounding like the future. Mm -hmm. Every time you hear this brother, yeah. he is present, he is creating what is now and what is tomorrow. Yeah. If you haven't heard him, please make it your business to hear him. We're just delighted that he's gotten closer to D.C. Mm -hmm. now, living in Baltimore, <laughs> so he plays here a lot more. He is one of the most iconic contemporary voices of jazz in the world right now. Make no bones about it, and I'm just really blessed to say and to call you Nova. Insurance, it just lets me know that I have to keep doing what I'm doing. And, um, you know, I'm really thankful, you know, uh, for the orchestra that I wanted to play with. <laughs> Originally, I wanted to go to Howard. And, um, you know, I grew up on this campus, you know. But uh, when I met Calvin Jones, <laughs> he gave me an opportunity uh, to study with him and do this chord at uh, UBC, and um, that wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for Mr. David Yarbrough. <laughs> you know, um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna uh, play, have to play a couple tunes we have to play. Mm -hmm. We had a rehearsal yesterday. We did that piano. <laughs> so this is a tune by one of his idols, Kirby Hancock, and this is entitled "Drifting." <laughs> Thank you. 
peace. Uh, yeah, we always need our concerts. Uh, 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 Mr. Chester, Professor Chester, can you come to our floor and, and, and give us some love? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you know, you know, you know, you always go for it. Yeah, let me get my step out here. <laughs> we're going to have some fireworks now. Uh, Alan Johnson going to play. <laughs> 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 Professor Chester going to play. <laughs> 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 Thank y'all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Young ladies, General, y'all can. We didn't charge the admission at first, but we started. We were charging. We got money ordered by the door. We we played at Blues Alley on Easter. So please come out and support us. Seven o'clock and nine o'clock, and we're gonna play like two long sets. So uh, we'll, play, we'll play stuff that we played last semester. Last semester we played Stevie Wonder, Send One Your Love. Uh, what does we play? Uh, remember. And but anyway, we got we got about nine tunes that we're gonna record, plus some additional tunes too. So we're gonna record those in two weeks. In fact, two weeks from today, we'll be in the studio recording all the music you heard today. So please come out and support us on Easter Sunday at seven and nine o'clock. So this is uh. Betty, in tribute to Billy Gosen. One, two, one, two, three.